Welcome to the Weather Insights Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. This is Sunday, October 6, 2024, and we are looking mainly at Hurricane Milton. But before we get to Milton, let's talk about the rest of the tropics briefly. We have disturbance number one just came off the African coast with a 30% chance of development over the next seven days. Uh, the storm, like the others, will likely, if it does develop, take a turn to the north and northeast. And then we have Hurricane Leslie, um, now with winds at 90 miles per hour, movement northwest at nine miles per hour, expected to turn north and then northeast. And then Hurricane Kirk, which was a powerful hurricane now with winds down to 85 miles per hour, it has started that north-northeast turn and picking up forward speed too at 23 miles per hour. Of course, we are all eyes on Hurricane Milton. There it is on the infrared satellite. This is um, the last time we talked about this on Weather Insights. It only had a 40% chance of development, so things have escalated quickly with Milton. Uh, it is going to be heading toward Florida. The west coast of Florida really needs to be on guard for this one. This is expected to be a major hurricane making landfall. And Florida has been getting a little pre-rain thanks to a frontal boundary. You can see it uh, pretty much covered up right now. And then there's a little break in the action. But when we get to Tuesday, Wednesday, Jeff, um, things get serious for the west coast of Florida. Yeah, unfortunately, uh not a lot of time from the impacts of Helene to what, what Milton's going to bring and, and potentially a, a very serious situation coming to the west coast of Florida in, in about 48 to, to 60 hours now. You can see the recon out there uh, this this afternoon, later this late this morning, early afternoon. Pressure down 986 millibars. Uh, pretty decent defined center. They did have an eye wall, partial eye wall, and the, the convection kind of wrapped up. And it, we may have a fully closed eye wall now, just like I said in the satellite. Notice the strong winds are on the south side of this. And you're like, oh, that's opposite typically of what we have. It's absolutely right because it's moving off to the east. And so the motion is this way. The winds on the south side are blowing from west to east. So you're going to get your stronger winds on the southern side of this particular uh, event at the moment. Um, but you can see we're starting to see the, the winds pick up even on the, the north and north northeast and northwest quadrants of the storm. So this is still in its uh, infancy stage here, but it is, uh, it's going to start going pretty quick, sitting over some really, really warm waters, good upper level conditions. Um, pretty much everything is, is go here for this to develop, develop quickly and become a really powerful hurricane in the southern Gulf of Mexico and approaching the west coast of Florida. Yeah, I've got a tropical storm warning now in effect for that northern coast of the Yucatan because of the uh, strong winds Jeff just mentioned on the right side of this storm. Quickly becoming a major hurricane by Monday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Gets through uh, a warm eddy of water there uh, in the Yucatan Channel. Of course, it's already a major hurricane by Tuesday afternoon, maintaining its major status. Question is, how how strong will it be when it makes landfall? There are some indications that it could weaken slightly, but uh, even if it did so, Jeff, the preparations are still the same for the West Coast of Florida and really all of Florida because this is going to be, uh, this is also expected to pick up forward speed too, maybe in about, I think, six miles per hour right now, but uh, it's going to make its way across Florida very quickly. That means the eastern side of Florida Going to feel the wind impacts. The western side is certainly going to be a um, very bad storm surge on that side. But uh, and, and on top of all that, all in a very populated area. Yeah, we'll have to watch here in the short term how close this gets to the northern coast of the Yucatan. You know, the, the closer this gets, the more disruptive potentially that could be on the circulation down in here. Right now, it stays well off the coast, and, and it likely won't have any impacts. But it could graze the coast here, and that would be the better scenario. Um, mm. it's in, you know What happens then is it kind of turns off to the east, northeast, and even the northeast. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, and then comes up toward the west coast of Florida. I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus, you know, where is this going? You know, right now, it looks like straight into Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Bradenton, right, right here in the mid uh, coast. But, you know, down here towards Fort Myers, Bonita Beach, you know, maybe even further south. You know, you can't sleep on this and right. this don't focus just where that center is going. 
Um, this, this whole area here on the west coast of Florida is going to have significant impacts as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. And as you mentioned, on the east coast of Florida. So these are the wind probabilities. So you can see approaching, you know, the west central coast of Florida, you know, high chances now of sustained 40 mile per hour winds by Wednesday morning. So that's going to give us two days. You got, you got Monday and you have Tuesday for evacuations and preparations on the west coast of Florida. And there's already evacuation orders coming out now around the uh, Pasco County and Hillsborough <laughs> County and Pinellas County. That's the Tampa Bay area. Um, for that. And, and the state of Florida right now is preparing potentially for one of the largest evacuations they've seen since Hurricane Irma back in 2017. This is not Helene, where it went into a relatively sparsely populated area. This potentially is heading into a high population area. Even if it misses Tampa Bay to the south, that Sarasota, Fort Myers uh, area, uh, Cape Coral is extremely populated. Yep. And so a lot of people here potentially are going to have to get away from the coast. And, and again, by Wednesday morning, tropical storm force winds and then crossing Florida, pretty much right along that I-4 corridor. So if you go from Tampa up to Orlando, towards Daytona, Cape Canaveral, um, that's when that wind, that, that strong core of winds is going to kind of come across based on the forecast track currently. And don't sleep on this over here on the East Coast. So as this comes off the East Coast of Florida, back into the Atlantic, you can get really strong easterly and northeasterly winds here north of the center. So up the coast, Daytona, maybe even up towards Jacksonville, is going to be the really strong winds here. And again, this is a lot of population that's going to be impacted by this compared to what we saw with Helene, you know, what was it, two weeks ago now? We yeah, have? yeah couple weeks um, and then the the mm -hmm. the real big concern at the moment is is obviously the wind threat but it's the storm surge threat you know this is an yeah. extremely vulnerable area for storm surge you can just look at this here's tampa bay any 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 center coming in kind of to the north at clearwater or directly in st petersburg is going to drive water into tampa bay and you can already see here Everything in red is over nine feet of wow. seawater inundation. So we, we saw a lot of this with Helene. Helene was average six to seven feet through much of Tampa Bay, which is a really was a pretty big surge. It's one of the highest surges they've had in a long time there. Yep. This would easily go much higher than that. You're talking potentially double that. But I don't want to focus just on the Tampa Bay because if right. the track is a little bit south, and it comes in at Sarasota or even further south, look at the look at this area down there yeah. around Myers, Cape Coral, uh, again, Port Charlotte. This is heavy population. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not the it's not the same level as Tampa Bay, but there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of development down here. And you can see it's an extremely storm surge prone area. Yeah. Uh, this is that area that was hit so hard by Hurricane Ian a couple uh, 2022, a couple years ago, where they had, you know, 16, 17 feet of storm surge down here. Um, this is very serious, and so this is why you have to evacuate, in this particular sense, you're going to have to evacuate large numbers of people from both the metro Tampa Bay area and also this area down here. I know there's a lot of color down here. This is all the Everglades, so this isn't hardly any population down here, but Naples does sit down here, and they could get, yep. get some storm, storm surge, too. Yeah. And then I don't want to sleep over here. It's not up yet, but as this exits the coast, so, you know, moving kind of east, northeast, mm -hmm. near Cape Canaveral, maybe a little bit further north, mm -hmm. those strong onshore winds here are going to kind of push that water up against the coast. Yeah, You don't get the same sort of surge on the east coast of Florida. The shelf, the, the water off the coast is a lot deeper, and you also have a pretty decent barrier island system there. And so you don't typically get big surges on the east coast of Florida uh, like you do on the west coast. And I just wanted to show the, the kind of what's been going on with the track and, and you know, why we're not hey, this is going to go into Tampa Bay or this is going to go into Sarasota or this is going to go into somewhere else. You can still see there's some discrepancy here in the in the guidance. You can see the, the Canadian and the UK Met, which is usually kind of on the left side of the guidance, is, is further to the south, more towards the Fort Myers area. And then you have the GFS kind of way up here towards the north, um, even north of Tampa. And so there's still some discrepancies. We're not talking big discrepancies. But it makes a big difference of where you get that big surge at. And if you look at the consensus over time, the trend over the last kind of 24 hours was kind of down toward the south. And then recently we've seen that trend stop and it kind of refocused right around where the Hurricane Center has been showing in that 
Sarasota, Bradenton, just south of the Tampa Bay area. So, you know, preparation time has to start now. The time is going to close quickly. Just like Colleen, this is going to accelerate. It's moving slow now. Yep. But you can see it crosses the entire Gulf of Mexico in about a 48-hour period. And by this time, Wednesday, maybe a little bit later, it's on the coast of, of Western Florida and making landfall. And we kind of touched on the intensity guidance. Uh, the official forecast has now bumped this up to a Category 4 um, over the southern Gulf of Mexico. Would not surprise me at all if this makes a run at Category 5 as it crosses north of the Yucatan there. Uh, you know, 160, 165 miles an hour, certainly not out of the question. It does look potentially like this will weaken some as it comes up the west coast of Florida, but that doesn't prevent the impacts that are going to happen. Right. And, and even if it comes down from a Category 5 to a Category 3, the impacts are going to be virtually the same because the wind field's going to expand. And so just like with Helene, big wind field storms are capable of moving a lot of water and producing really big storm surges and also spreading those strong winds really far inland. And in this case, across the entire state of, of Florida there as it passes through. And so don't, don't let, don't let the, it peaks in the Gulf of Mexico and it weakens coming up to the coast, prevent anybody from making the preparations and evacuating. This will be a devastating storm event for the West coast of Florida. And, you know, I just said that two weeks ago with Helene, and uh, this is this is going to happen. You know, I, I, I there's all kinds of interesting stuff out on social media now about things and why things are happening. And yeah. this is, going to, you know, and all this. I'm like, this is going to happen in two days. The West Coast of Florida is going to be hit by a very significant hurricane. And there's going to be again, just like what we saw with Helene up here in the Big Bend area. There's going to be devastating damage down here uh, along the coastal areas. Last thing I did want to talk about, I. I, I there's been a couple questions about, well, why is this moving to the east? It's it's unusual, right, to, for storms to form in the western Gulf and move towards Florida. Typically, storms that form in this part of the Gulf of Mexico move west into Mexico or maybe north towards Texas. And I think it's only happened like three times in recorded history or something like that. Very rare. Yeah, it's not it's not super common. I mean, but it happens, and it yeah. happens this time of year as you get into the fall because you have these fronts and troughs coming down mm -hmm. and you can see this trough here through the Northern Gulf. You can see the old front here mm -hmm. laying across Florida tied to this low here off of uh, Newfoundland. And so this system is, is on the steering flow that's on the South side of this trough. And so that steering flow is off from the West to the East. And so it's going to slowly push this off to the East over the next day or so. And then a, this trough is going to deepen here in the Northwest Gulf of Mexico here off the Texas coast. And as it does that, that's why it induces that kind of east northeast or even northeast bend and how that bend happens how quickly it happens will determine where it makes landfall here on the florida west coast so you know this is the time of year you get these types of tracks in the gulf of mexico last time we saw this was tropical storm josephine back in 1996 uh hurricane opal back in 1995 was was formed in the same area down here and then made landfall up here in the florida panhandle um, and the, the Tampa hurricane of 1921, which is probably mm -hmm. the record hurricane for Tampa, the record surge for Tampa 1921, was somewhat, I believe, similar to this. I need to go back and look at the track. But this is a worst case scenario track for Tampa. It is not a track coming really up from the south. It's a track coming from the west and potentially going just north of them. Again, if it goes south of them, that's an east wind in Tampa Bay that blows the water out of the bay. If it goes north of them, that's a west wind in Tampa Bay, and that's going to pile a tremendous storm surge uh, into that highly populated area there. So we'll just have to see as we get into this. Hurricane watch is likely coming tonight for the west coast of Florida. Make those preparations. You're, you're going to have to evacuate. I know. I already know the thought process. I, I talked to people last week in Florida. Uh, people in the panhandle of Florida took uh, the big bend of Florida took uh, Helene very seriously because of Adalia last year. They they had storm surge with Adalia. They knew when we're talking 10 feet higher than that, they understood what that meant. And almost everybody we talked to left. Um, I hope that's the case. Again, you, you have to think for people in Tampa Bay, they just evacuated yeah. two weeks <laughs> ago for, for Helene and there was damage and there was storm surge flooding down there. But imagine having to go through this two weeks, you know, two big evacuations, and this evacuation will be much much more significant than Helene, but two weeks apart. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there's there's still damage everywhere around Tampa from Helene. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. And uh, and not just uh, storm surge, um, historical storm surge for that area, but with the wind this time. And uh, we kept saying during Helene, well, the fortunate thing is it's going into, you know, if there's any silver lining, it's going into a low populated area. Well, this is quite the opposite of, ne- of that uh, going into a highly populated area. And uh yeah, take those evacuation orders seriously. And it is the weekend, too. So a lot of folks, you know, may not be paying attention. And the situations change so quick quickly with this, too. So if you have friends and family in Florida, make sure they know what's going on. And of course, you can do that right here on the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Also, check out our blog, our Weather Insights blog if you prefer reading, we have updates there as well. We'll continue with the updates and the briefings this week. Jeff, thank you very much.